Hey, what up everybody? Steve Breeze coming to you with Zora, my dog. And a little backside information about what's going on is on my phone before this file. There's a three minute video of me looking at this box because I pressed the button to make the video and then the box caught my eye and I started looking at this box to find out where the hell it came from and what the last thing I bought that came in the mail that I opened was. Turns out it's that Jeff Hardy figure the other day and I was trying to figure out why the box didn't have an address on it and how it got to me and how it got here. Well, tonight was Wednesday. I haven't watched the main event in a few weeks. I had to get back into the action. Um, there was one thing that, that came to me. Uh, I found out uh, before I got home. Uh, small little main event spoiler was that uh, the man, Paul Heyman, uh, was on the uh, commentary team for the Curtis Axel match tonight uh, against... Uh, Sin Cara. Um, it was awesome. I mean, Paul Heyman being on the mic is is a highlight uh, of any show. Honestly, it's been a long time since he uh, sat down at the desk at WrestleMania. Uh, it was him and uh, JR uh, calling the action of everything over the... Uh, and basically, when I, when I think of Paul Heyman on the mic, I think of him on the mic mostly during the invasion, but the invasion hadn't even started yet. It was just that the show... Um, you know, the WCW sale had just gone down that week. Uh, WCW was supposed to make a major impact at that show, but of course, uh, it was, uh, Sean Stasiak ran his mouth who, uh, ruined the whole thing. Uh, they were supposed to basically do some sort of, uh, um, I guess you can say invasion of the uh, WWE uh, at the time during the Vince versus Shane match, but basically somehow Stasiak leaked the whole thing out. And uh, WWE just stuck the guys up in the skybox and said, you guys sit here and um, we won't do anything with you for a couple of months before uh, Lance Storm did the run-in at a house show. I think uh, freaking uh, Stacy, uh, she showed up, uh, Stacy Keebler showed up at a uh, SmackDown in uh, Baltimore and, uh, you know, Things like that just sporadically started uh, happening around before they just, you know, full on went with it. Um, one of my favorite moments of that whole thing was the uh, Kurt Angle. Uh, he was doing the freaking medal ceremony, and Shane came running down there. That 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 was a huge moment for me. I loved that moment. But I'm reviewing a whole lot of stuff. I'm I'm reviewing the freaking invasion angle. Uh, instead of, you know, tonight's thing. I guess I've talked enough about it. The reason why Paul was out there was Curtis Axel against Sin Cara. Honestly, I thought this was a really, really good match. But by far, Paul Heyman uh, being out there with the commentary team was uh, a highlight of anything. Every time uh, Josh Matthews asked a question, uh, basically... Uh, he ran him down as being a horrible announcer. Uh, whether you believe that's true or whether whether you believe it's uh, false is another thing, but it was very funny to hear. Um, Paul Heyman even tried to take credit for The Miz, who was out there on the commentary team as well, that all of his, uh, you know, well-doings in WWE was basically because of, um, you know, Paul Heyman was the the guy that was overseeing him in developmental that got him to the point where he was able to be seen by WWE and uh, pushed to the next level uh, and you know, going on to becoming WWE Champion. Miz says that he didn't have anything to do with that. He became WWE Champion on his own. Uh, this, that, and the other. There was a ton of highlights from this. Honestly, go out of your way to watch this uh, match on YouTube just so you can see Heyman out there. The match itself um, was honestly it was it was a good match. Uh, Curtis Axel is looking like he's not going to be used on SummerSlam. Uh, you know, makes shows you that they're basically not doing anything with the Intercontinental title. Uh, in my opinion, I think the World Heavyweight Championship has become the Intercontinental title, and the Intercontinental title has sort of fallen off the face of the earth and doesn't have any value in wrestling anymore. Uh, it's kind of sad. Um, also kind of sad that Sin Cara is still just doing these uh, main event shows isn't being used on Raw, isn't being used on SmackDown. They still give him the orange-blue light effect, I, the fact that I don't see this guy. All that often still makes me forget that every time they do this, the lights are out, uh, not, are not out, and it's not a power outage. But, um, man, they're paying this guy a lot of stuff. And um, the matches I've seen from him as of late, he isn't really becoming, you know, botch car anymore. He's really gotten his style down. It's... Time to start using this guy and, uh, you know, basically making sense of this huge deal that he signed two years ago or three. 
it's almost it's been over two years and we're coming up on three with mania season uh coming up he signed uh somewhere in that time period but uh, so almost being in WWE three years not even really being able to capitalize on one big push yet the way they brought that guy in i thought he was going to become champion right off the bat um from there we went on well that was the last match well i apologize from the beginning it was the shield going up against my uh, uh, Mark Henry and the Usos. Uh, honestly, I thought this was a match that you know could have been used at SummerSlam. The fact that um, it was on main event, and for the main, for the most part, the Shield got a clean victory. I guess you can say um, the way it happened. You know, basically, was the the way the pin happened was um, we saw the Usos uh, hit. Uh, Dean Ambrose in the middle of the ring with a big uh, frog splash, and as uh, Uso came up to uh, freaking you know sort of celebrate his big move, uh, we saw Seth Rollins hit him with the uh, the curb stomp, uh, and that just sort of left him laying there for Ambrose to cover him for the pin. The whole time they were in the match, they kept hyping up the match as the Usos had never beat the Shield. I was there. I remember I wasn't there, but I remember watching the match. On uh, SmackDown, when uh, basically the Usos and Christian beat them, and they're uh, they're hyping it up like you know in this three way they can actually break that streak. You know, if they're gonna count this win in the three way as breaking that streak, then that other match should count too, and it shouldn't be undefeated. But if it's a tag team match, well then yeah, um, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins has hasn't beat him yet, but that made me keep thinking that, you know, the Usos were still involved in this title hunt and they were going to be used uh, in the future. Uh, they, they lost this match. Um, the Shield left. They, they walked out with all their belts. And when they came back from their uh, Daniel Bryan and John Cena commercial, they were in the back doing a Shield-style promo where they were holding up the, uh, the camera in front of them, all, you know, basically like this. And they were, you know, going back and forth, talking to all of them guys. And um, basically... Ambrose run down, ran down everybody uh, that's been in his past, saying that you know he is the best uh, United States champion, and he might as well be the uh, WWE champion because he's better than all the rest, and he's better than all the competition. Sort of making himself stand out more than the uh, the other two guys, and then basically called them the best tag team that's ever been in the WWE, and there's no team that could uh, get in their way. Uh, Challenge the likes of John Cena. Uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, Randy Orton. I don't know if they're setting up a match for Monday Night Raw, but that is a match that I would love to see. Seeing how Raw is in our arena, and I'm going to be there um, second row. It's going to be a hell of a night. I know that we're already being teased as the, the Shield against Mark Henry and John Cena as the Dark Show uh, main event. But hell, I'll see John Cena fight the Shield twice, even if the second match is going to be uh, something to make us go home happy in the long run. I don't know. I really want to see what the Shield is going to do for uh, SummerSlam because they basically just ran down anybody um, that they could find. Basically saying that Mark Henry wasn't on their level. Uh, you know, the Usos uh, weren't there with them anymore. So maybe this is them leaving them behind and moving on to something else in greener pastures. But I'm not sure. One of the funnest matches of the night was Natalia versus Oksana. Oksana keeps on being used as a wrestler. I keep seeing her used in these matches on main event. In my opinion, she's not a wrestler. She's never going to be a wrestler. She was a damn good valet for Cesaro. Cesaro jumped her for no good reason. We're almost coming up on a year is when her and Cesaro won the uh, United States Championship from the the Miz at SummerSlam last year in the uh, Dark Show uh, or the you know pre-show, I guess you could say. Um, and we really haven't seen her do anything to get back into managing. In my opinion, she's never going to be a good wrestler. Quit having her be a wrestler, just have her go out there. She's not just she's not going to do it. But why this was good because because they used Natalia being in this match as a way to hype, hype up Total Divas and the whole time all he did was talk about Total Divas. Uh the Miz got to say that he was a nine-time uh well, he isn't a nine-time champion. What did he call himself? A nine-time reality star, I guess, talking about him being on the real world and him being on all of the real world road rules, real world road rules challenges. Um, I don't know. 
I mean, that was the highlight for me. They kept on talking about the backstage shit that went along with it. And he was saying that this isn't sports entertainment, this is drama. And that was something that really, really made me laugh. It's bad reality television. I wouldn't go far to call it drama. There is some stuff on there, and it makes you go, ooh and ah, but for the most part, we watch this shit, and we know it's not real. Uh, tonight's main event was a damn good show. I would tell you to go out of your way to make sure you see this because of Paul Heyman being out there for commentary during the Curtis Axel match. The matches themselves, all three of them, pretty good stuff. Only one hour show, easy to crank out, easy to watch. Make sure you have your, your main event DVR'd for next week because this is always a good show. I hadn't seen it in a few weeks, but uh, doesn't mean I didn't miss it. Peace out.